Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. They might save you if you're wearing one of these. And these. And some of these. <laughs> well, it's lucky I was wearing my swimming trunks today. Did you guess it? We're about to take over the job of today's hero, lifeguard Donna. Being a lifeguard isn't just about watching out for rule breakers like Zand, it's about saving lives. Donna's a lifeguard training manager, so she's an expert in spotting swimmers in trouble and giving medical attention for all sorts of injuries. Common things are nosebleeds. People that run down the side of the pool, slip over. We might have people that can't really swim very well, so we might have to do minor rescues. We might have some older swimmers that may have heart conditions. We go right from the very mundane to the life-threatening and serious. So we're going to be lifeguards later. What do we need to know? So a big one is communicating. We'd use the whistle. One short whistle blast gets the attention of a bather. Two short whistle blasts. I need to talk to another member of my lifeguard team, get their attention for something in the pool. And then three short whistle blasts. I might need to go in and do a rescue and I need to tell everybody that's where I'm going. Can I have a green whistle? If you like, yes. Well, thank goodness for that. Next tip. Use a really high chair to get a brilliant view. The lifeguards are constantly watching the pool. We use scanning patterns as well, so we might do a side-to-side -side motion, they might do up and down the pool. They're constantly changing the way they're doing things to keep themselves aware. And finally, for more serious cases, use the really important rescue board to help get casualties out of the water safely. We're really worried more about spinal injury, so by having them on a board, we've got them supported and we can strap them so they don't move anymore. We're not going to make that injury any worse. The lifeguards secure the straps gently but tightly around the casualty to prevent causing more injury. Thanks, Donna. There's a lot to remember. We've seen how important the lifeguards are at keeping us safe while we're swimming and how they respond to emergencies. But how will Chris and I do when we're thrown in the deep end? Get it? Get it? It's time for us to take over as lifeguards. Our challenge is to spot if someone's in danger. Use the correct whistle signals to alert the other lifeguards to help. And use the rescue board to get a swimmer with a suspected spinal injury out of the water quickly and safely. Sean, have you got a handle on the different whistle signals? Go on, test me, test me. It's lunchtime. This could be embarrassing. With extra poolside lifeguards on hand to keep swimmers safe, Donna will be judging our every move and picking a winner. Chris, you're up first. Lifeguard Kieran is pretending to be an injured swimmer. Will Chris spot him? He got the right number of whistles on that one. Three whistles means he's on his way in. What are you doing now, Chris? So I almost strapped Sam to the board. Sam's just one of the lifeguards helping, not the patient. Sorry, Sam. Ah, oh, beginner's error, eh, Donna? Head strap's a little bit slow. Uh-oh, quicker, Chris. He's not doing too well at the moment. Oh, dear. You need a strong finish here, Chris. What do you think, Donna? These are a little bit on the loose side. A bit loose, really. A bit loose. These are really loose. Oh, really? Well, that's not good. Time to move aside, Chris, and watch how the master does it. Yeah, right. Your turn. Here comes our fake casualty. Have you seen him, Zand? Zand? Zand! Oh, oh, oh! Two whistles to get the other lifeguard's attention. He spotted him, he's given the right signals. And another three to say he's on his way. He's run right past the board. Oh, Zand. That's not good. He's quickly got this chest strap on, and now he's going for the head strap. Really jerking those straps into place now. Whoa there, careful! Oh. This is going to be a tight contest. Time to see who came out on top. A few things from both of you. Chris, you started off really well. It all fell apart a little bit when you got the board in, though. And then when we lifted out, the straps were quite loose. But Zand, it was a little bit the other way around for you. The guy was face down in the water for quite a while before you reacted. You ran right past the board and had to come back for it. But putting it in didn't go too badly. So your verdict for today, guys? It's a draw. A draw? 
We were both equally amazing. Yes, or equally rubbish. We learned a lot today, but I would say that overall, Donna, it is best if we leave it to the experts. Zand, let's hand our whistles back. <laughs> We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile ready for his first patient. And Chris is out and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? First in is eight-year-old Liam, whose scalp needs some studying. So, Liam, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? I have a double crown. I want to know a little bit about it. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got a double crown and I want to know a little bit about it. Itis. That's right. Now, tell me about these double crowns. Where are they? Here on my head. On the top of your head. Well, I want to get a closer look. Can you lift the eyelid for the ouch cam? That's great. So everyone has one crown at least. That's the bit at the back of your head where the hair kind of whirls in a circle. But in Liam's case, he's got two. And that is very unusual. What is a crown? A crown is nature's way of covering your head with hair very effectively. Your hair's also got to change direction, so hair's got to go down at the back, down at the front, down at the sides, and the only efficient way of doing that is to swirl it round in a circle. All having a double crown means is that you're a bit special and a bit unusual. Very few people have them. I've never seen one before, so thanks very much for bringing your amazing head into the Ouchmobile. And thank you, Dr. Zan. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about in the park. How can we be twins but be so different? So how are you guys different? She's got Down syndrome and I don't. And you don't? OK. Zand and I come from one egg, whereas you each come from a different egg in your mum. And Down syndrome happens when the egg that made Charlotte had one extra chromosome in it. So in every egg, the chromosomes, the chromosomes are the genes, and Charlotte's got one more chromosome than you. That means you look a little bit different, and I guess you feel a bit different, and you may act a little bit different, you may think a little bit differently. So what things do you like to do that you're good at? Dancing. 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 So like all twins, you've probably got lots of things that you like that are the same. And so the one difference is you've got an extra chromosome. Yeah. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's 10-year-old Josiah who wants Zahn to check out his cheek. So, Josiah, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? Well, I have a scar running from my eye to my mouth. So what's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a scar running from my eye to my mouth itis. Sounds right to me. Now, how did it happen? Well, I grabbed something from my brother and he jumped and scratched me in my face. Now, Josiah, can we get a closer look at this scar of yours? Yeah. Can you open the eyelid for the ouch cam? I'm going to zoom in here. And that's it there. Now, have you got any questions about your scar? If I go older, would my scar get bigger? You're already 10 years old, so your head is about 95% as big as it's ever going to be. So if you look at our heads, our heads are actually quite similar size, right? They're roughly the same size. That means that the skin on your face isn't going to change size, and so that scar is going to stay roughly the same size. What did it look like when you first got it? It looked like this. Oh, wow. Scars just take a long time to heal, so that'll keep healing over time. And in a few years, I bet you won't even be able to notice it. Josiah, thanks very much for bringing in your amazing scar. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs>